All right, everyone. <clears throat> In today's lecture, we are going to forge ahead um, in probability and statistics and learn about the rather, um, I guess, gentle concept of the mean uh, or the average. So mean and average are synony synonyms and uh, there are various ways to calculate it in a um, statistics context. So we're gonna be going over uh, a couple different variations on what we generally think of as the average. Uh, most of it is really just the same thing in different costumes. So there's only one big concept, which is the mean, which I think everyone has already a pretty good grasp on. So we're just gonna go over how we deal with it mathematically. Okay, so before we can set out, we have to um, make a clear distinction between what we in statistics call the population versus the sample, okay? So the population is generally speaking, the entirety of a group or, um, or of a, yeah, the entirety of a group that we're trying to understand. So the population could be just Mr. Griffin's finite mathematics class. That is a population. It's closed. You're either in or you're out, right? But the population could be everyone in the United States or everyone in the world or all of the gopher tortoises at UNF, some entire group. So usually in statistics, we are trying to understand a population and we can't, generally speaking, get access to the entire population because either it's too big or too hard to find. So in order to understand the population, we use samples. A sample is a subset of a population. And you can really think of this in the set theoretic sense that we've already learned. I uh, think back in chapter four, uh, we learned about, or chapter five, I think, we learned all about sets and subsets. So a sample is a subset of the population, which you can think of as the sample space, the big, the big space. So we use samples to derive understanding of populations and populations are usually too big or too, um, there's too, yeah, it's just too big to get our hands around usually. You know, sometimes we can get a population in its entirety. So the first way that we can understand a population is through this, what we call the sample mean or average, right? So a sample is taken from a population. It's some subset of that population. This sample is gonna have lowercase n many representatives. So n lowercase n many numbers. And we call those numbers x1, x2, all the way up to x lowercase n. Then the sample mean, the average, is simply taking those numbers x1 through xn, adding them up, and then dividing that whole sum by lowercase n. So this is how we generally compute an average. Take all the numbers, add them up, divide by the number of numbers. Now, the, one of the important things here is notation. For a sample, we use this thing that we call x bar to denote the average. So x bar goes with sample. And x bar means the average of the sample, okay? So let's look at an example. Here we are given a frequency table and we're gonna calculate the sample mean from this frequency table. So remember what, how to read this. This is saying that we have the value five and we have two occurrences of five. We have the value six and two occurrences of six, the value seven and 13 occurrences of seven, so on and so forth. So if we wanted to calculate the mean here, we would take two fives and add them up. That's the fives. Then we'd have two sixes. Then we'd have 13 sevens. 
So I'm not going to write them all out, but we know that there's 13 of them. And then 28. We know there are 20 of them. And 10 nines. Four tens. And one eleven. So we're, we're trying to calculate the sample mean here. So the first thing we're going to do is add up all these numbers. So to do that, because I haven't written it out all, ex oops, sorry guys. Let me go ahead and plug in the phone real quick. Okay, so first thing we're going to do is add up all of these numbers. So if I were to do it, okay, why are you doing this to me? There we go. So we would add two fives, then two sixes, then 13 sevens. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. 13, then 28, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 10 nines, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 4 tens, 1, 2, 3, Four, and then 111. So we add up all those numbers. We get 414. And then we need to divide by the total number of values. Now, in order to get that number, we need to sum up the frequencies. So the frequencies, if we add them all up, will be the total number of values. So I'm trying to avoid that glare. Here. So we're going to add up all the frequency values. Sorry, I'm just trying to make sure you can see everything. So that's going to be 2 plus 2 plus 13 plus 20 plus 10 plus 4 plus 1. And so that's 52 values. So the sample mean is the result of this sum divided by the total number of values, which we learned is 52. So that's 414 divided by 52, which is 7.96 roughly. Okay. So this is our sample mean, and I use an X bar to denote sample mean, okay? So this is how we generally, the most basic way that we calculate mean, but for a frequency table, there's actually a shortcut. So all of that work I did typing in each individual seven, each individual eight, each individual nine is actually um, more work than is needed. If we have a frequency table, there's a shortcut. Okay, so how does that work? So in general, sorry, if we have a frequency table, meaning we have the values that we've observed and the number of occurrences of each individual value, then the sample mean can be calculated by simply taking each individual value and then multiplying it by its frequency, then adding up that series of products and then dividing that total sum by the number of observed values. So 
if we're to use the last example here, then you'd see that you'd the sum would be we had two fives, then two sixes, then thirteen sevens, then twenty eights, ten nines four tens, run out of space, sorry y'all, and one eleven. So we'd add all that up and we divide it by 52. So that's five times two plus six times two plus seven times 13, plus eight times 20, plus nine times 10, plus 10 times four, plus 11 times one, 414, just as before, and then divide that by 52, and we get the same result, 7.96. So when we're given a frequency table, this is definitely the better way to go about calculating the mean rather than just adding up all the individual values and writing them repeatedly over and over again. We can use the frequency table to our advantage. Okay, so that's the sample mean. There is a corresponding notion of the population mean. And really there is no um, computational difference between calculating a population mean or calculating a sample, sample mean. In the case of a population mean, we simply have values for the entire population instead of just a subset of the population. So there is just notational differences here, really. Instead of using a lowercase n to represent the size of a sample, we use an uppercase n to represent the size of a population. Then we have x1 through x capital N to represent all of the observed values. Uh, possible observed values in the population. Uh oh, sorry, spazzing out, spazzing out. Okay, then we use X1 through X capital N to represent all of the observed values in the population. And we calculate the mean for the population the same way. We add up all those values and then divide by the size. But there is a notational difference. Instead of using X bar to represent the population mean, we use the Greek letter lowercase mu which is the lowercase m in Greek. It has, it's sort of like a U with a, a long tail on the front, okay? This is the Greek letter mu, which is the lowercase m, and it's m for mean. So when we're talking about a population, we use the Greek letter instead of the X bar. <clears throat> oh, gosh darn it, okay. I don't know why it spazzes out sometimes, y'all. I'm really sorry. Okay, so <clears throat> uh, we just like with the pot, the sample mean, we can we have the same alternative computation uh, if we're given the frequency table for this for the population. So mu, and I accidentally made the fraction bar too large. Mu is the value times its frequency. Add all those up and then divide by the size of the population, just like we did with the sample. So we can always do it that way. All right, oh, dang it. All right, so here's another example. This time we're given a frequency table, but the frequency table has relative frequencies instead of just pure frequencies. So remember that the relative frequencies are the frequency divided by the total number of observed values, okay? So here I'm gonna calculate an X bar. It could just as well be a mu, it doesn't matter, okay? So um, in fact, just so we can tie it all together, let's just call it mu. The computation will be the same. Now, this is a slightly different setup than before. And you're gonna see that this actually sets us up for a corresponding definition of mean. 
So here we're going to calculate the mean using this relative frequency table. But in this case, dang it. But in this case, we're going to take the value and then multiply it by its relative frequency. So five goes with 20 over 104, then six goes with zero, seven goes with zero, and then eight goes with 10 over 104, nine goes with 12 over 104, 10 goes with 50 over 104, and 11 goes with 12 over 104. So just taking the values and multiplying by the relative frequencies and adding all that up, we'll actually get a mean. So if we do this calculation, that's five times 20 divided by 104 plus six times zero, which is zero, seven times zero, which is zero, plus eight times 10 over 104, plus nine times 12 over 104, plus 10 times 50 over 104, plus 11 times 12 over 104. Come on, stop spazzing, there we go. All right. And oops, looks like I messed up here. That should be an 11. Okay, so 11 times 104 times 12 over 104. So we take all of those values and their relative frequencies, multiply them, and then add them up. And we get our population mean, which is going to be roughly 8.85. So this gives us a a court, another way of calculating mean now when we have relative frequency instead of just pure frequency. And in fact, what we call this is the expected value. Okay, so this is yet another definition of the mean and it's really no different. It's just a slight, slight tweak, conceptual tweak. Okay, so the expected, all right, the expected value of a random variable X, which we can think of really as the mean of the random variable, the mean, the expected value, which we denote E of X is simply the uh, a value times its probability plus the value times its probability all the way up through all the values and all the probabilities. So this is exactly like what we just did above. So remember relative frequency corresponds to the empirical probability. So 20 out of 104 times, we got a five when we were doing this experiment. And so this is the probability of getting a five. The relative frequency is equivalent to the probability of the value. So here we're taking the value and multiplying by its probability and then adding each one of those up until we, until we get the mean, dang it, Sorry, it's spazzing out so much, guys. Yeah, it just seems to do this on, you know, at random. I don't know how to prevent it from happening. So taking each of these values and multiplying by the relative frequency is the same as taking each of the values and multiplying by the probability, which is what we call the expected value. So using that same calculation above, we'd say the expected value of X is all that same stuff that we calculated which is 8.85. So expected value again is, we say we use expected value for random variables. So we have this X, but it's really ultimately the same sort of computation. Okay. So we can um, use the expected value here to calculate the population mean for this random variable X. So, Again, to calculate it, we're going to take the value and then multiply by the probability. So zero times one over, one over 32, one times five over 32, 
2 times 10 over 32, 3 times 10 over 32, 4 times 5 over 32, and 5 times 1 over 32. So if we add all those up, we should get the expected value or the mean. So zero times one over 32 is zero, I'm not gonna put it there. One times five over 32, plus two times 10 over 32, plus three times 10 over 32, plus four times five over 32, plus five times one over 32. And that gives us an expected value of 2.5. Okay. Now, in this particular example, I failed to mention that this data is for the random variable X, where X is defined to be the number of heads in five tosses. So again, uh, the, va the possible values are zero heads, one heads, two heads, three heads, four heads, or five heads out of five tosses. And these are the probabilities of getting that many heads out of five tosses. So recall from 7.3 that this is an example of what we call a binomial random variable because X has only two options and uh, two possible options per trial. And they, um, there are only two possible options per trial. And each individual trial is independent of the previous trial. And so we call this a binomial random variable. So if, it's a, if we're dealing with a binomial random variable, then we could actually shortcut this whole process to calculate the expected value. So the expected value for a binomial random variable X is E of X, which is equal to the number of trials times the probability of, of success, N times P. So this previous example was an example of a binomial random variable. And in this case, n uh, was equal to five, five tosses. And the probability of success, which is the probability of getting a heads, is one half. So if we wanted to calculate the expected value for that x, then that would be five times one half, which would be five halves, which would be, lo and behold, 2.5. So this is a much faster way of calculating the uh, mean or expected value for a binomial random variable. So you can do it this way, you get the same result, but this is much faster, okay? Okay, so that is section 7.4. We're talking about the mean. Uh, most of these examples, uh, I think most of the problems will be pretty straightforward. There's only so many ways that you can ask questions about the mean, the average, or the expected value. Remember that there's different notation for population versus sample. So that, that, that's a slight distinction there. So be careful when you're working through the problems that you use the right notation or select the right notation uh, in the computer program. But otherwise, the computations are pretty straightforward. So I will post that homework soon enough. Um, yeah, and have a nice day.